Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Tutorial Grid. On this one, we're going to check out on how to take a daytime footage and turn it into night. So we have something like this. Real kind of smooth. You got your optical flares, you got headlights, and all the cool stuff. First of all, I wanted to let you guys know you need to go check out the Avid Productions 479 Facebook page. So go to facebook.com slash avidproductions479, like us, subscribe to our YouTube, and do all of that stuff. Also, subscribe to Tutorial Grid because we are awesome and try to do a lot of things that, uh, you know, video people should do. Alright, but anyway, to start this composition we're going to go into uh, composition, new composition. And 24 frames, 1920 by 1080, uh, 30 seconds long will be just fine. So we'll go ahead and go into that. We'll go to our project file, we'll take our footage that we want to do, uh, which I have some DSLR footage uh, from the other day which I'm actually driving this Mercedes car here which is this little car here right there that's me and yeah so we've got the Mercedes car we'll go ahead and we'll stop it at about right here and then we'll go on and we'll stop it about right here all right, so we've got this. Cool. Now, go ahead and align yours the way you want it. And go on from there. Okay, just go line up this here real quick. Cool. Vroom. All right, now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change our exposure. So go into uh, and type in under effects and presets, exposure. <clears throat> go ahead and put that down. And we're going to drop down the exposure quite a bit. So we'll go ahead and drop the exposure down till it's fairly dark. We're going to change our gamma a bit, darken the gamma to where it looks fairly fairly dark out maybe ex drop it down a little bit more on the exposure side yeah somewhere around here and I don't think we you don't want to set mess with the offset but exposure negative 4.7 gamma 0 0.24 uh, you can mess around with that more if you like the more gamma you have the more technical correction there's gonna be but uh, I like mine to be a little bit darker. That way we can really mess around with this scene. Let me go ahead and darken this up. Yeah, I still like it about 20. Okay. Now, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to change our saturation. So go into saturations and pull that down. All right. I'm going to change the yellow since we've got a lot of weird little yellow tint. We want this to be more of a, more of a coolness because whenever it's dark outside, it's very blue. So we'll go ahead and bring the saturations down on the yellows just a bit. And we'll bring our blue saturation up just a tad. And just a little bit. Then bring the darkness down of the blue and up the saturation. The darkness. Yeah, so we're going to have the blue saturation at about 52 and the blue lightness at about negative 73 and that's going to bring down that that kind of eerie darkness look. Alright, the next step we're going to do is we're going to change the tint of the footage. So we'll go here and set it, uh, set it at tint, color correction tint. We'll go ahead and drag that. And it's going to have map 2. Uh, you're going to click on this white. We're going to just kind of give it a kind of a bluish tint right here. So find a blue you kind of like. And click OK. And go ahead and put them out to tint. Bring it down just a tad. 
You don't want it to be zero, but you kind of want to just give a little bit of a tint. So maybe like an 18, 15 to 20. Just kind of slightly tint that up to where it gives kind of more of a, a natural, natural kind of look. And now you're probably asking yourself, now how do I do the headlights? Now why didn't you, you know... All right, now you're probably wondering why I didn't track the headlights. The uh, reason why is because um, I tracked the headlights in the first thing the first time I tried it and it worked fairly well but it's a lot easier to make this headlight beam that we're about to create manually without actually having to change a whole lot of stuff uh, and track a lot of stuff it's just a lot easier this way to animate rather than trying to focus on the mat and triggering it to or uh, and uh, putting a null object and all that stuff um, so what we're going to do we're gonna go ahead and try to create this um, headlight beam so we're going to go here and we are going to duplicate so we're going to do control D go ahead and duplicate that and we are going to hit add now cool thing about this is now whenever we add this it's gonna lighten it up a lot so now we're gonna create our mask so we're gonna have a triangle mask from here on our headlights we're going to bring this down to about right here and we're just going to create this kind of triangle beam now this doesn't look amazing so far but it'll it'll get there I promise alright and now that we have this what we're going to do is we are going to feather so go ahead and hit F on our mask property here and we'll go ahead and feather this out right now all right now it doesn't look amazing but we're gonna go ahead and bring our exposure up a little bit bringing up the lightness we're actually going to duplicate these in a little bit but we're just gonna go ahead and set our masks so far so we're gonna change the mask paths and that's gonna be it so we're gonna go ahead and animate our mask path so go ahead and pull this down all the way to the beginning I'm gonna go ahead and change the mask path here we want it to run through so go ahead and move this you're gonna kinda wanna bring this down to where you kinda think that this car would be driving so we've got our mask here Kind of follow this headlight. We've got our beam right here. All right. So we'll go ahead and make another mask on top of this beam, which will be a lot easier to do since we're going to duplicate these. So we'll go ahead and hit our beam here. Do another light here, here, and here. So we'll create another triangle. We'll do the same feather and we'll do 110. 110 feather. We'll kind of match and align some things, make it look a little better. Alright, so now we got kind of a slight headlight thing going on. Now we're going to go ahead and change the mask path. So go to the very first keyframe here and you're gonna do mask path so hit mask path and then we'll go up one frame so we'll go ahead hit the mask path button and we'll set a frame and we'll go forward a frame so we'll go forward one frame or actually let's move a move a couple frames forward and we'll just go ahead and move the path of the mask to where we think it should be aligned for the next frame to follow kind of moves over this way, moves over this way, and moves over kind of this way. All right, so now we've got our mask kind of following us. Go ahead and move a few more frames in, move the mask. There's a lot of animating to this, but you'll get used to it. 
Animation is the key in After Effects. Now remember, you don't want to have this side of the mask go too far over because if you do that, you're going to have a lot of illumination right through in this area and we're trying to keep all the illumination down right through here. So go ahead and keep moving the mask and we'll do this until we have this entire bottom thing completely filled out. So just keep going. All right, now you see I broke my mask here uh, really quickly. Uh, reason why is whenever I had it out through here, it already illuminated, illuminated the background quite a bit. So I just went ahead and broke the mask just a little bit. That way I can keep it from creating this crazy illumination back here. Sometimes you'll need to do that. Just kind of break things just a little bit. That way it gives a better picture for the overall ending effect. All right, so now what we have is this quick kind of just really, really light kind of effect. So we have the background illumination. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and play with it a little bit more. So we have both our masks in place. They're looking pretty good. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and play with more of this illumination. So what we're going to do is I think I need to feather this out just a little bit more because this is going to be our base. So we're going to put this up to 149. Um, the biggest thing we're going to do, since this is already an additive later, we're adding all of this stuff on top of an already shot footage. So now that we have our masks in place, let's go ahead and duplicate this layer again. So notice we have an even stronger base. All right, so this is looking really good. So what we're going to do again is we're going to go ahead and duplicate that again. We'll go ahead and pull down our mask settings, both of the mask settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of give this a core kind of level. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and our mask expansion tool, and we'll just kind of bring down the pixels. So bring down those pixels just a bit. So we're going to have more of a lighter core. So I brought my expansion down negative 76. I'll go ahead and do this at the same right here, negative 76 on our other mask. We'll go ahead and duplicate this maybe twice. So now we have kind of this fake fakery headlight. So it goes in, goes out, and looking pretty good for a, for a quick kind of fake headlight. It's not bad. All right. It's a very bright like LED kind of light. Uh, but notice we're having kind of a issue right here. We're getting more illumination right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get our background layer and kind of move in this, this little dilly here. Okay, move that in. Yeah, that should be, that looks a lot better. Sucky thing is we were shooting on a really, really sunny day, which we have a shadow here, which we can kind of get rid of, <clears throat> but this is a headlight tutorial, and I'm going to stick with that. All right, so we have our kind of cool looking headlights. Now, you can do a lot of different things with these. What I usually recommend doing is uh, on the tent level, you can kind of bring up the tent on your top layer and your bottom layer. This just kind of give it more of a, a cool blue tint to really kind of enhance the feel of the lights. You can see that it kind of brings in that blue kind of tone. All right, now the second thing we're going to do is we're going to go to layer, new, ah, layer, new, solid, and we're gonna make it black solid, Hit okay. We're gonna type in optical, Flares. All right, now this is a video copilot plugin, which is awesome. And you'll just go ahead and drag that down. All right, now we have a lot of different flares and uh, objects that we can choose from. Um, we have, I know there's a, there's a really nice flare in here. It's uh, headlights. It's just kind of a regular one. What, what should I use? What should I use? No, presets. What would be a nice headlight? Yeah, orb light. Orb light will be good. All right, we'll go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and make our black transparency level. We'll do head, go ahead and do add. 
and we'll make this move. All right, so go ahead and put that down. And I kind of want to change the scale of this kind of quite a bit. And brighten that right here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the position of this and we'll go ahead and start from the beginning. So we'll move the position and basically animate this. Now this is where having a null object would help a lot. It's kind of difficult and a little bit more time consuming. It's about the same time consuming as doing it with tracking, but I find this just a little bit easier because tracking this footage was kind of tough. So do this. All right, now we've got our one flare down. Go ahead and put up another flare. So go ahead and do black solid duplicate. Go ahead and hit the position tool here. Go to the first frame again and hit position. Go ahead and position that right here on the left hand side of the car and go ahead and animate that. Now we've got this. Not really liking the scale of let's change this flare. I'm not liking the optics, the little doof here. Let's do light. Oh Let's change it to blue steel. Do blue steel on both of these options. Natural flares, blue steel. There we go. Looking a little better. All right. It's kind of a quick little. All right. Now it's looking pretty good, but it still looks fairly fairly daytime. So I'm going to go ahead and go into this back layer, the very bottom one that we've got, and I'm going to go ahead and change the exposure again. Change that to fairly dark. And put that down about negative six, negative 6.54. See what that looks like. That's pretty good. Now, it's looking really good, actually. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right, so that's pretty much kind of the basics of creating this effect. Uh, now, another thing that you can do is what I recommend is on these black solids here, you'll see this motion blur key or the uh, the key for motion blur. Go ahead and turn that on as well as on for any layer that has any kind of motion on it. And that's going to make it look a little bit more natural uh, rather than having kind of like a really crisp pixels every time. It's gonna make it look more like the, uh, the camera's trying to catch up, which is a little bit better to do because it looks cleaner that way whenever there's a little bit more aberration and, and whatnot on the actual film itself. All right, but that seems to be about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial about how to do a very quick day to night as well as changing the uh, to these type of headlights. I think they look pretty good. Uh, make sure to, again, go ahead and check out the Avid Productions 479 page. Go ahead and like us as well as subscribe to our uh, tutorial grid page. Uh, I'm Cherokee and hope you guys enjoyed it.